Hi there, my name is Sharon Callis and this is a little video on the anatomy of a drop spindle on the chance you're interested in making your own spindle, if you are trying to do your own spinning and teach yourself, uh, your tool that you're going to be using is the first place to start. And um, when I'm teaching drop spindling, I always spend a lot of time talking about the tool because that's the best part to really help understand what you're doing and how the tool is functioning. So uh, main things to know is there's a t uh, different designs. There's either going to be a top weight or it might be a bottom weight. Um, when you are looking at these, I'm going to talk about top weights because that's what I normally use. There's a certain amount of weight to these that help them spin longer and the weight being on the outside of the drop spindle is going to change how long it's going to spin uh, remarkably. So when you're adding something as your weight, try and make it so that it's concave, it's got um, an in cut or something. Uh, you can be looking for things like children's toy wheels where the spokes create this space and push the weight out to the outer edge and that's going to be useful. The other thing is, of course, having um, the rod or the stick uh, as straight as possible, but you know, you can use a forest stick if it's, if it's not perfectly straight, that's fine. You want it to be long enough that you're going to have room for your hand to be on the spindle, as well as to have um, your cob of, of wool that you've spun that's going to be in storage down here on the, uh, uh, right underneath your weight or just on top of your weight if you're spinning this way. And also, uh, as you get spinning, you're going to want to be able to bring your leg up and have this kind of action on your leg where uh, the stick is going to roll across your leg. That's as you get more proficient and are spinning um, as efficiently as possible. So a few things I wanted to show you. These are drop spindles that um, we purchased to use for class and we just find them online. But um, you can totally buy a dowel, a cup hook, and then some kind of a, a wooden biscuit or something for your weight here. The drop spindle weights are usually, um, what is it, like an ounce and a half, an ounce and a quarter. Uh, the very finest one that I've got here, this is an Ashford, this is uh, 0.5 of an ounce, and it looks like it's flat on the top, but you can see the underside is actually a cutout and all of that material, all that mass is taken out. And again, that means that when you get a spin going, your spin is going to stay longer, which is what you want. So you've got more time to be working with your hands on the drafting and the spinning before all of that energy runs out or the energy in the, in the um, thread starts to come back down the line and drive your spindle in the other direction. So weight on the outside and a, a stick that's long enough that your hand can hold it as well as have some space for your fiber. So this is the favorite one that we use for classes. I really like this one that um, came from my friend Karen Barnaby. Um, this is a really beautiful handmade spindle. I'm not sure who has made it. The other thing you'll notice on a spindle is that they have these little cuts up on the top. Uh, sometimes they only have one. I like this one because they're kind of every quarter. It's decorative, but it's actually a place for your line to be coming through and holding in place as you're circling around that hook, which is also really, really useful. Um, you can take things like uh, old kitchen tools or sticks that you find. I'm not sure what this original use was for, but um, this on its own now doesn't spin for very long. It's not heavy enough, but I could be gluing or nailing and tacking objects, beads, etc. around the outside edge of this to give it some weight and then it would spin quite beautifully. I can be doing things like taking found sticks, this one is not very straight, and use coil stitching and create something that's going to be my disc and again I would think about having heavier materials that I would use on the outside edge. So these are um, drop spindles, which are classic for European style spinning, the weight of them that you're going to want really depends on um, what it is you're spinning. If you're spinning very fine, um, like wild fiber, seed fluff, and short, you know, things like cotton even, 
um, you're going to want a very light drop spindle that's got less weight on it. If you're planning on spinning something that's quite um, bulky and chunky, this isn't going to have enough weight to counter the energy of the twist in your line. You're going to need to get yourself a heavier drop spindle, a Salish style weaving or Navajo, um, uh, sorry, spinning or Navajo style spinning would be something like this. This is a wooden cookie and a piece of, I think that's ocean spray. Uh, and there's just a piece of cloth that's just jammed into there to hold that in place. And now I can actually roll with this on my thigh. And it's not fantastic, but it's absolutely usable. It would get, um, get me going on learning how to spin and be able to um, put some time into the making and understanding. You can even do things like take lids and maybe, you know, measure, put your hole in the middle of that, pop a hole through that plastic cap I could fill the inside of this with plastic, um, like Fimo or children's Play-Doh or something to put weight on that outer edge and stick that through um, a chopstick. And that's going to give me something as a drop spindle. Um, what else did I want to tell you about drop spindles? Looking around my house to think, well, what would I have that I could use? I just took a wooden spoon and I tied a string around it and I tried spinning it on, it, on its own and it really did not spin for long at all. But even just putting a couple of wooden cookies from David's studio, that sort of waist, and then I just used a half hitch there instead of a C hook because I didn't want to put a C hook on the end of my spoon. But now I can even actually get a little bit of action happening on that. Again, not much, but even seeing what a difference these made leads me to understand a little bit the physics of the drop spindle and then I could proceed to find heavier things that I could put around the outside of that. So I encourage you to go forward, see what materials you've got in your house, what you can use to create some sort of a drop spindle, pieces of wood that you can find in the garden, and how you can measure, make a hole on the inside, put some weight on the outside, make yourself a drop spindle, and then you're ready Next step is learning how to spin. Good luck.